Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Steve Cypress, who's a successful entrepreneur and top direct response marketer who's built nearly a dozen successful companies, including simulated sports services, winner circle promotions, and many more. But he prefers the vicariously the vicarious thrill by coaching many businesses himself. Some people refer to him as the the king of small business makeovers. He will share his big big lessons learned and the wow strategy, which helps businesses increase sales and marketing. Steve, thanks for joining me. Pleasure to be here, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. We're both in Chicago, but yet we're on Skype video here. And I always like to include a fun fact uh, about someone. And fun fact about you is you have an interesting connection to fantasy sports. Yeah, you know, now a lot of when I ask people or talk about fantasy sports, it seems like everybody's heard of the thing. But uh, it's a little over 30 years ago now that I uh, and my friends thought that we had invented it. And so uh, back when I was actually my last year of law school, I, I, I noticed, I, I realized my friends, everyone was about to be moving away and going their different directions. And I was like, how can I keep everyone together and keep in touch? I know I'll make them call me every week and tell me their lineup and we'll draft <laughs> teams and we'll, right. we'll, I'll send out a newsletter and I'll keep the statistics. And, and it wasn't until a couple years later that we found out that some of my league members uh, had, had brought me like little ads that were placed in obscure sports magazines. They were like, hey, there's people doing this for a living. And your game is fantastic. Your newsletters are great. You know, everybody was telling their friends. So I had one league, then I had two leagues, and everybody wanted to get in. And so I was like, what the heck? Let's go for it. I, I graduated law school. I didn't really, never really wanted to practice being a lawyer. And I was like, let's give this thing a shot, place a little classified ad of my own, and the rest is history. A few years later, it was a multi million dollar business. It was wow. the largest in the industry. This was all pre computer days. What did so, it look like pre computer days? Oh, it was a ton of manual labor. And, you know, I was taking the phone calls and, and I had a computer, but almost nobody else did. Yeah, I mean, people Actually, weren't on the internet then. What's that? People were not on the internet then. How did you even. There was no internet. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that must have been somewhere. But no, I, uh, I that's why I existed. I would get the. Uh, the, the box scores out of the daily papers. I had to wait for the papers to come. Or on Monday mornings after football games, you know, I would at 4 a.m. I was in Boston, go over to the Boston Globe <laughs> offices where they first come out with that newspaper and then wow. rush back and put in all the statistics. And I, I paid a computer programmer to write this complicated program to do all the scoring. And I, but it was a lot of manual grunt work. We, we made copies of the newsletter on copiers and actually stuffed them and licked the envelopes and put on stamps and later on got the posted machines and I had a big multi-million dollar operation. That's unbelievable. And this was all way pre-internet days and I uh, then, you know, maybe another story for another day, but I made a lot of mistakes. I messed up. No, go ahead. And long before the internet came along, I was out of the game already. And once that is going on now, it's a huge game changer. It's pretty much people play the game themselves. Yeah. And I... I, I love the fact that I'm thinking that the owners of these companies have little to do with the actual doing of the game, and they can actually work on their marketing, they can think of new contests and new games and new rules and new prizes and all the fun stuff, and, and new ads and, and get the marketing out there. Yeah. And I was overwhelmed into the minutia of the actual, you know, oh, but we also got to get out the newsletters and the copiers down and call the guy to fix it and, you know, all that stuff that now... People like go. I, I, st- I like to play the games. I go on the computer. I set my own lineup every right. single time I do. I remember to 30 years ago, and this is amazing. I'm setting my own lineup. I mean, I can tell you back then, people would call, call me, leave a message, say their lineup, and if there was a mistake, we had to call them back and try and track them down before wow. the deadline of the game time and go, hey, dude, you got two quarterbacks. Which one do you want on the bench? And if we couldn't get a hold of them, the rule was you now had no quarterback in that game because it would be unfair to the team you're playing. And, I just a whole different world back then. So I still like to play the games, but I love the fact that I no longer have to actually manually do all the work that was involved. But it, man, it was so much fun to turn your hobby into a business. It was a dream. Yeah. You know, I loved sports. I love watching sports and learning all about the players. One caveat, though, to anyone out there, when you turn your hobby into a business, yeah. downside, you no longer have a hobby. 
So what happened was, and that's part of the reason I, I, I ended up driving into the ground, I, I lost the thrill mm. of following sports yeah. and, and reading the papers. Now it was a chore. Now I had to keep up with everything. So, you know, if I got a few days off, it wasn't a few days off of enjoyment. It was I knew I came back and I was overwhelmed with having to catch up. So the hobby of loving to watch sports and loving to know what's going on turned into this pressure mm -hmm. of having to know everything about every rookie who's coming up because my, my, my clients, my members would call me. And I was the king of knowing everything about every minor league guy and every whatever and who you should trade and who you should draft. And, and that became such a pressure that I started to resent sports mm. and actually burnt out completely on the business I built. Because another thing I did is I started with baseball. Well, I started with basketball. And then I went to baseball and then I went to football. And then we added on golf and and, and, and college basketball. How did you even manage all of that? I mean, exactly. Exactly. Well, I, I'm a typical ADD entrepreneur who always wants to start something. Entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are starters. We're not finishers. So, hey, a new game. Let's put in golf. Let's put in this. And and if anyone isn't a sports fan out there, just so you know, sports merge into the seasons merge in. There's never a break. Everything is running all the time. So, yeah, every week at some points I had to get three or four newsletters out every single week. Well, wow. compile all the stats. But that got my blood flowing. And it reminded me of the way I went through college and law school was never crack a book and never go to a class until the last two weeks. And then don't <laughs> sleep and stay up and cram and get everything done. I don't know if anyone else out there, entrepreneurs, were like that. We, right. we love that thrill. Well, that's how I, I put that into my business. That thrill of I hated the first 10 or 11 weeks of a semester where, come on now, what am I going to do? Go take some notes, go to a class. That's, you know, come on, other people do that. I love the thrill of waiting till it's too late to even crack that book and start writing that. It's a good it. motivator, right? Made it a business life. Yeah, it's a good motivator. Well, that's a little burnout, isn't it? Because yeah. 52 weeks of finals week <laughs> is a little bit of a burnout. Well, so after for sure. seven years, uh, I, 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 I burnt out. And, I, and I, another big lesson from that is I said no to a venture capitalist approached me after about three years, and the offer was $1.75 million for 45% of the company. So people that are Shark Tank fans, hopefully everyone out there is watching Shark Tank if yep. you're an entrepreneur. And but back then I didn't know anything about business or Shark Tank or venture capital or anything. And my idiotic response, uh, looking back, it didn't take me long to, to realize what an idiot I was. I said no because I was like, well, wait a minute. It's been three years. 1.75 million for 45 percent is a valuation of over three and a half million dollars in three years. Right. In ten years, it's got to be worth 10 million dollars. And why would I want to give away almost half of that? I want the whole 10 million. So I said no. So what happened? Because what that 1.75 million would have done is an, a question you'll see asked on the Shark Tank all the time. Well, what would you do with my money? Right. Well, we need inventory. We need this. I didn't need inventory, but man, more employees, better prizes, better marketing. How about instead of myself bootstrapping everything, I was putting back every second and every penny back into the business. Right. How about if I would have had like a decent car, a decent place to live? So, so when things got a little tough and the pressure came on as the company grew, if a lot of people have been a part of fast-growing companies, you've, or at least you've heard the saying, the fast growth can kill a business yeah. uh, faster than slow growth. And all that pressure mounting, and I resented the fact of like, you know, here I am still driving this beat-up car and living in this apartment and not putting, you know, putting everything back in the business. And man, what if? I would have just taken a hundred grand out of that money right. for yeah. myself. Life-changing. Put a deposit and then drive right. a nice car and have a relaxing, nice life, maybe take a vacation. And I, so I resented it all and I, I got burnt out on the thing and I unfortunately missed out because I, I collapsed the thing during, when the baseball strike hit in the spring of 1991 that nobody would really remember here, but obviously it was the death knell for me, I remember it. All my marketing, over six figures worth of marketing and mailing out brochures, yes, folding and stuffing envelopes and there's no internet, it was mailing out brochures over six figures of marketing and zero response because the season, everyone was like, is it canceled? Yeah. So all the money in fantasy sports comes in in the beginning of the season. Nowadays, they have these one-day leagues, so money comes in all the time. But back then, it was like, hey, it comes in right before baseball. Then there's nothing until the fall. Then it comes in for football, basketball, hockey. Then nothing again all winter until baseball. And you have to make it through. I had to make it through those lean times. Right. So I made it through all the lean times of the winter serving everyone in three different sports 
and being right on the edge of now needing the big cash injection of baseball, and it didn't come in, and that was about it. It's heartbreaking. Just, yeah, well, you know, but, 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 yeah, at the time, but the positive lessons are learned tremendously. And so what happened from that is I've learned to spot the signs that a business is in trouble. Yeah. And is on the verge of going out of business. I can spot the signs just talking with an entrepreneur and seeing who's overwhelmed, who's a little burnt out, mm -hmm. what's happening. When I look at the numbers of the business, and I have used that for my benefit, but most importantly for the benefit of a whole lot of clients and business owners out there. So, you know, everything works together for good, and there's something great that came from that. But, yeah, at the time, that was a pretty crushing blow, especially since a few years later, this Internet thing came out. The game practically plays itself. I'm like, are you kidding me? No more phone calls, no more listening, all the messages, typing in all their lines. They do it all themselves. Right. I just have fun with the thing and make money. You have That's a greater appreciation than most people for fantasy sports from uh, yeah, so you I licking was, envelopes. I was, you know, and there's a saying, uh, don't be a pioneer. Right. Pioneers get arrows in their back. Right. So, like, right now, I live in Chicago. We live in Chicago. If I want to go to L.A., what do you do to go to L.A.? You make a phone call, you hop on a plane, you're there in four hours. Right. You're sitting in a comfortable chair. You're getting served a drink. I mean, this is kind of nice. I don't, I don't see any arrows in my back. But if it was 150 years ago and I want to go from Chicago to L.A., good luck. <laughs> you get in a covered wagon. Hopefully you have enough water. <laughs> hopefully you survive the mountains and the terrain. And, the, and, the, and, and who knows who's coming to rob you and kill you and whatever. And, like, a lot of people just didn't make it. And even when you made it, then what? Then you have to build, cut down some trees and build a house. You know, don't be the pioneer. So I was one of the pioneers and made all the mistakes, but the groundwork was laying. And I, I remember, talk about a pioneer. Back then, it was the thought that uh, fantasy games were gambling and it was illegal. Hmm. And I remember, I had a law degree now, and I remember going to my county courthouse and looking up the law and saying, hey, this is a game of skill. And I can tell you it is, and anyone that plays it now knows, because yeah. I can put, you know, a game of luck is a slot machine. It right. means my, my grandmother has as good a chance as me. That's a game of luck. This was this, and Anyone that plays fantasy sports knows that I knew the guys that are winning the leagues every year. They do all the research. They draft the team. They know how to trade. They whatever. So I was like, no. You know what? I went in the face of the lawyers telling me and all the naysayers telling me, you can't do this. This is gambling. Because what happened was... All these uh, these little competitors were running these little tiny operations. This is a marketing uh, 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 lesson that I did. Is I did what I call opportunity gap analysis. I I looked at the competition and I looked for gaps in between what they were delivering mm. and what I knew the target market wanted. Yeah. And as a player myself, I knew what I wanted. Well, one thing is the prizes. Yeah. So now we know that this is a billion dollar industry and people are winning thousands of dollars every day and, and that's pretty much it's a lot of big cash prizes. Huge millions, cash, yeah. Millions a day for these 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 online services. But back then the prizes were and it was in their ad. Uh league winners win a t shirt or a hat. T shirt or a hat. Come on. I remember I love, one was don't get that excited hat. about that, yeah. So I have like a, a Yahoo bobblehead doll somewhere from winning a league. Come on. But I was like, hey, look, uh, you know, at least I didn't study a lot or really enjoy going to law school or want to be a lawyer. But I knew enough to know that if you can give a prize of a T-shirt, you can give a prize of a million dollars. I mean, if it was gambling, you can't even give a T-shirt. That would be illegal gambling. So I'm right. like, look, I ran an ad and I very simply said, win two tickets to all expense paid trip for two to the world series that was amazing. my problem amazing well and everyone was like what are you doing the prizes are a t-shirt and a hat and i was like yeah so i feel like blowing them all away yeah. i would like to be the largest company in the industry pretty easily so those that's just one of the things i did comparing their ad to what i could do instead that was yeah. one of the things and the orders just flooded in and then the game is why people stay. The prizes are why they came. My game and my newsletters and the camaraderie mm -hmm. was so much fun. But, man, I, and that's when they came after me and said, you can't be giving a Super Bowl trip. That, this is gambling. You know, it's based on the players playing, and everyone knows that's gambling. And I was like, went through this whole thing. So that's, that's a pioneer. Yeah. And today, if I jumped into the field today or even 10 years ago, really easy. You get some computer programmer. I mean, they, they now need big money from they, both of the big leading services of venture capital, millions of dollars. A lot of competition. Prizes. Yeah. But as far as getting the thing going, it's a dream compared to where it used to be. So 
you know, there's a big lesson, you know, do not be a, a, a pioneer. You're going to get arrows in your back. You're going to get killed. Like, wait until somebody else has laid the groundwork and then go jump in. Uh, but, you know, who was the first first laptop computer? Uh, I bet it wasn't Apple. Uh, but they're the largest company in the history of the world. Right, yeah. Okay, so I bet there was a time where Steve Jobs was, I saw the movies, you know, read his book. I mean, he's in a garage somewhere putting together a computer. It wasn't the first one. And right. so I'm sure there were people telling him, what do we need another computer for? Right. So today, maybe someone's telling you, what you're a chiropractor. Maybe somebody's telling you, we got a bunch of chiropractors in Chicago. What do we need another one for? You would say, oh, yeah, you know, I better go find a town with no chiropractor and hang my shingle out in the middle of Montana or something. That's the way to do it. Well, no. If you have, you put together the right business and marketing plan and you have something specific solution to offer people have a specific problem people beat a path to your door oh for sure uh, but if you're the first one you're going to go through a lot of stuff so anyway that's kind of a long answer to so that. steve you were even using direct response marketing in those days that's the thing so I what made you know there was yeah such a thing as direct response i didn't find it out till 25 years later and that's why i took line and sinker went into it when i discovered this was a thing yeah because i knew it worked because no so, one out there was putting an ad for win a world trip to the World Series well, see, or win yeah. trip to the Super Bowl. And there was a lot of other elements of direct response back yeah. then. So, so a lot of people now, it, you know, and I, I teach direct response and I held, I've held over 200 events. You, you've been to at least one or two of them yeah. in Chicago over the last six years for entrepreneurs. And I introduced the concept of direct response marketing and light bulbs go off and they're like, never thought of it, whatever. Right. Didn't think that would work for me. But when I first saw it, I was like, well, I know that works because I did that. Right. And I did that and I did that and I did that. But then I also saw how much money I left on the table. I was like, well, but I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But I had that advantage that, yeah, I used it before I knew what it was. So, so yeah. another thing I did was these, believe it or not, these ads all said, send $3 and a self-addressed stamped envelope for the brochure. I love it. And if you join, we'll put that money towards your fee. I love and it. And I was like, hmm, how about a toll-free number and a free brochure? They had to, we had to call, back then, a, a long distance phone call, I don't know if, you know, I'm dating myself, but it was like, hey, I'm on long distance here, be quiet. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, long distance costs money. Nowadays, it's silly. In fact, local calls cost more than long distance. Sometimes <laughs> or whatever. But it was like long distance call. Well, you had to call long distance to whoever had a computer yeah. in their basement to have this game and then, or, or send $3. For, I was like, well, that's pretty easy. How about a free brochure? And again, the people came to me and said, well, what are you doing? How are you going to pay for all those brochures? Right. I'm like, it's called direct response marketing. And, well, I didn't say that, but I, I had, and I still do, I teach what I call the tip, the iceberg philosophy. Yeah. Extremely important that business owners have the iceberg philosophy. We've all heard, I haven't seen it in person, that an iceberg, 90% of it is unseen below the surface. Yeah. So I've seen movies, and I saw Titanic. I mean, you see, this, that's a huge mammoth iceberg. It sunk the ship. Oh, it's huge. It's whatever. No, it's not. It's teeny. It's inconsequential compared to the 90% that's below. Right. So, oh, a free brochure I'm going to give out. That's going to cost me a dollar. Or back then, 50 cents. I mean, a stamp was probably 20 cents or whatever. But it's going to cost, i got to print it, i got to mail it, and what if the people don't join and whatever, you know. that. But that's the tip of the iceberg. Below is, yeah, but when they send in money, and they join the baseball game, and then it's so much fun, they join the football game, and then they join the basketball, and then they right. stay five years, and then they tell three friends. Mm -hmm. and they went, Now what was that 22 cents to send out the brochure mm -hmm. compared to how fewer my competitors had to be getting by making somebody take $3 and write mm -hmm. out a check and send it into them? They yeah. were looking at the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I right away was looking below the surface and saying, let's put out an offer. An irresistible offer compared mm -hmm. to paying for a brochure, free brochure is fairly irresistible. Right. Back then, by the way, a toll-free number, it wasn't like today. There was no way to get a toll-free number to call forward to just hook it up. It had to be a separate line. Now, at the time, I had graduated law school. I was taking a bar exam, waiting for the results, and had no job there for didn't know what I was going to do. So I had moved back in with my mom, for crying out loud. 25-year-old guy moving in with my mom. Wasn't happy. It's pretty common, but, but yeah. Nowadays, yes. Nowadays, <laughs> it's common. And besides, I don't, if anyone knows me, I don't give a crap about common. I'm not common. I don't care what everybody else does. That's terrible to me. Right. But you should have seen the look on my mom's face when the, the phone company pulls up with the truck and the ladder, and they have to drill a hole in the wall 
of the house to put in a line for a toll-free number. She's like, they are drilling a She's hole. She's gonna kill you. House to put in another phone line. That's and I was like, look, when did when I move out, I will fill the hole. Like that's what you had to do to get a toll-free number. Right. So it was easy for everyone to not have a toll-free number. I said people would like a toll-free number. So free number compared to paid number, free brochure compared to paid brochure, really nice prizes that people want compared to crappy prizes nobody wants. Right. Uh, those were, st- and, and there were more. I mean, if I had the ad in front of me, I just that's what I did. I just looked at it and said I can beat this, that, this, that, this. And most of yeah. all, like I said, it was it, that's that's the hallmark of what we call yeah. direct response marketing and what my wow strategy is. The O in the wow strategy stands for the irresistible offer. Right. Put something out there that the, a sports fan could not refuse, a free call where they could call me and ask any questions. And by the way, I would that phone was right near my bed and there was no turn off the radio. You were just picking, that was just you picking it up all and day. Three in the morning, I would pop out of bed and go, the phone's ringing. I am, I'm living with my mom Back home, 25 years old. I am broke. I'm in debt from from law school, not like it is today. But I, I don't know, 100 grand, 50 grand worth of debt from school or whatever. Sure. Like, I am bouncing out of that. I placed the ad. In fact, to place the ad, it, I had to place three weeks of ads. I remember. Oh, and that's another thing. Everyone had a one inch ad. I placed a two inch ad. This is pretty simple stuff. But again, yeah. people would go, "You're crazy." Everyone has a one inch ad. Yeah, that's good enough. I was like, I don't want to be good enough. Right. I'm going to dominate the industry. I had a two-inch ad. Now, later on, of course, then I had a quarter page. Then I had full-page ads. I mean, I, I was number one in the, in the world in the industry, small yeah. industry. But I was always putting more money back, better prizes, better, bigger ads, better everything, bigger, more computers coming in, more everything. But back then, it, it was a little tiny ad that I had to go back to my high school job to get the money to pay for three weeks in mm. advance to run the ad. My high school job was being a vendor in Madison Square Garden selling peanuts and popcorn. Oh, wow. beer. And here's a 25, this is a bunch of 18 year old kids. There was two times. There was the 18 year old kids like when I did it. And then there was the old men that had it as a second job because they had six kids and whatever and could barely live, you know. Well, I was kind of in the middle. I mean, I had a law degree, you know, and I'm coming back and they're like, what happened? What are you doing? You have a law degree. Right. And you're coming back for 20 bucks a night to hawk beer up and down the stands for two and a half hours? I'm like, yeah, you're right, because I need $900 for yeah. three weeks of this ad. And I worked for however long it took. And then I was like, now I'm out. And then I also had to go get a computer. And I started the whole business with a Tandy 1000 computer. I was going to say, what did you even use in those? Th- yeah. With a 10 meg external hard drive. <laughs> now I think that's like... This video we're creating now, probably in the first minute was 10 minutes. Oh, for sure. The yeah. photo was 10 minutes yeah. that you take on your phone. Now. That was my whole business. And I'll never forget the second year how proud I was when I had to go to the store and get a 20 meg. I doubled inside a 20 meg external. I'm like, things are happening. This business is growing. I mean, <laughs> it was MS-DOS. There was no graphics. There was no anything. Ever. It was such a simple thing back then. But I, that's what I needed to do. I needed to get stationary printed up. I needed to... And, and I, so I had to go back. I didn't have, I went back to my high school job to make the money. I put everything out there and, and I had the sage advice from me. Here was my mom. So moms are great. Here's my mom saying to me the question that people, your audience, entrepreneurs probably aren't thinking because we, we know we take a risk. Right. That's why we're the backbone of society. That's why we're, we're the key to the whole world economics. We're the ones putting stuff out and taking the risks, making the changes. But my mom, a school teacher for 45 years, a government worker, no risk at all, looked at me and said, you're giving a trip for two to the World Series as a prize. What if nobody, not enough people join your game? What are you doing? Right. Well, we can already tell from the way I just said I financed the whole thing. I'm like, I just said, yeah, mom, that, that could happen. But the World Series isn't until October. And I'm pretty sure... Then in the next six months, that thing's going to cost me like three or four grand back then for the mm-hmm. tickets, the, the airfare, the hotel. I, I picked them up with a limo from their house. It was a father and son Amazing. from Seattle. Yeah. And the World Series actually was in New York that year. It was 1986, and it was New York, Boston. And you had to buy the block of all four tickets. And so guess what? They got games one and two. I got games six and seven. And to this day, I got to go to the Bill Buckner game. Oh, seven. really? You seven. were there. Oh, yeah. Game seven, the Mets win, my beloved Mets. I'm like, that was great. But I, yeah. I, I you know, had the tickets, the air. I'm like, Mom, I'm pretty sure I could put it, put away 100 bucks a week 
if if only one person joins and I have to send them to the World Series six months from now, right. I'll learn my lesson. I'll dust myself off. I'll go get a job or I'll do yeah. something else or whoever. So to every entrepreneur out there, go for it. Yeah. And think, what's the worst that can happen? That's the worst that could happen is the whole thing goes away. I sold some popcorn. Those people ate popcorn. They're happy. That money's gone. Radio Shack's happy. I bought a computer. I, maybe I can do something else with it or sell it. There was no eBay back then. But, you know, and I can send these people on a trip and, and I'll dust myself and go on. So get out. You got an idea? Take the action. Go yeah. out there. I mean, I don't have the stuff anymore because I put it in a friend's storage and then the friend could get a hold of me and he redid their whatever and they threw everything out. And like, but if I had that initial stuff, you you would look at it and say, that is horrible. I know I would. I go, that is embarrassing. Look at that first brochure I put out. Look at the, the envelopes, by the way. I couldn't even get them typeset. And there was no desktop printing. Again, no computers back then. I took, I went to the station store, got little stenciled letters and, and peeled them off the plastic and put them on an envelope. Put them on a piece of paper. They're, they're not straight. How could how could I do that straight? I mean, they were sort of crooked and whatever to put together the, the name and address, take it to the printer and say, make up envelopes. I mean, I just got it started. You just did it. Yeah. You know, there's a saying we have in direct response marketing. My half-assed, crappy stuff is a hundred times better than your perfect, unfinished thing that isn't done yet. Right. So take action. I mean, yeah. and this became a multi-million dollar business. And you know what? Once it's a multi-million dollar business, you better believe it. I had now tricolor, red, white, and blue envelopes and the professional logo. I paid someone a thousand bucks for a logo. What a ridiculous thing I did. And all kinds of, you know, beautiful, I brand new state-of-the-art computers at all times and kept moving to bigger offices and, 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 and my ads were now professionally made up and everything. But, but, nothing like when it just started and it was yeah, right. me bolting out of bed at three in the morning talking to a guy for 20 minutes hey we're connecting you know he doesn't know anybody that loves baseball like he does right. loves to talk to me wants to join the game sends in 175 bucks and you know hundreds of people do that and and then thousands of people and they right. tell their friends and whatever and pretty soon you got a multi-million dollar yeah. business i mean they, you still have a valuable you have tons of people on your list it was still valuable what happened at the end List? Uh, yeah. I didn't know anything about a list. Again, I didn't know anything about the direct response. And that's one of the things I said earlier, like, look at the money I left on the table. Oh, I had a list. Yeah, I had a list. Wait, wait a minute. Or how about this? Every week in my newsletter, I had a section for the tip of the week. So I put in a little tip. You know, uh, when you're making a trade, you know, don't look at what you need. Look at their lineup and look what they need. Right. And call up and go, I see you need a third baseman. Let's make a deal. Instead of going, you know, I need a left field. Let me look at a guy who has a good left fielder. So I may put these tips together. Could I not have put those all together and sold it as a package the next year as a premium or given it a bonus if you join my premium service? You get this right. all the tips of how to play the game. You don't have to wait 26 weeks of the season to get them all. You're going to get them all right away. How about if I had a level of VIP service where you... Uh, I get a, a special number to call directly to me one hour every week. I would per once the business was big, I was no longer on the phone. Yeah. Now I will personally take calls. I mean, there's so many things I could have done if I had a clue that you market to the list. Yeah. I had no referral contest, no no marketing to list. In fact, what at the end of the business that that baseball strike in the spring of 1991, the the money went out for the printing and the mailing and the ads and all the brochures, yeah. and then about. You know, a week or so, I don't, of course, I rub that memory out of my mind, but I think a week or so into the season, of course, they solved the crisis and they, they you know, no strike is over, we're going to play the season minus a week. Well, minus a week, excuse me, but it's minus four weeks of all my money coming. Right, right. Because now people are bitter and they're going, I'm never watching baseball again. Well, a week later, they were fine, but they weren't joined, they were already not joined my game. Right. Well, but what did I do? I had to rerun all the ads, reprint everything, resend everything out. So more money out the window for a very low response. It took a couple of weeks or a month until people were like, you know, because also when the season starts in baseball, if people aren't sports fans, there's the playoffs going on in mm -hmm. hockey and in basketball. So people don't even miss baseball until like June and then they're like, all right, I guess I'll watch baseball. I'm like, yeah, well, it's too late for you to send me money. I didn't have the daily leagues like they have now. I'm like, right. I'm out. And uh, and it was a mess. But uh, man, if I would have had a list, why don't we market to the list instead of just have to always place all these ads to get everybody and to yeah. re-mail out everything? What if I could have just 
said something to the list. Since you're a member, I'll give you a special something or whatever. I didn't know anything about a list. Yeah. I want to hear what's next after uh, the fantasy. But first, um, tell people uh, an example of when someone used the WOW strategy that you taught them and kind of the results they got. Great. So besides me, because that's a, you know, the WOW strategy is very simple. I, 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 I've gone to all, you know that I've gone to just about every marketing seminar, read every marketing book. And, you know, I got, I got, I last count, I have 14 shelves floor to ceiling full of books like this and, yeah. and notes from seminars and DVDs and CDs and you name it. And I'm on everyone's list that I get all their products and all their everything. And like, that's all, I'm, I, I mean, you know, I drive my, my, my beautiful wife, Michelle, crazy and whatever, but I'm watching infomercials and I'm not just watching them. I'm like pausing them and explain, did you see that? And Shark, I mentioned Shark Tank show. It's a half hour or an hour show. It takes like three hours to watch if you're with me. Dissect it, yeah. He should have, did you hear when he just said that? He asked for the numbers and the guy said this and it should have been that. And you see this, you say, come on now. So on this crazy marketing minded I love that. Yeah. and craziness of it. Uh, and now I'm even forgetting your question you asked. But okay. The wow factor. So tell people what the wow so factor I, I is. And, yeah. This wow factor, I realized, yeah. let's simplify the whole darn thing. Everyone's complicating it by saying you need a special strategy for Pinterest and you need a special <laughs> product for YouTube. Right. You need a special thing for email. You know? Yeah, no. Okay, sorry to burst all, and a lot of those are my friends that are doing that stuff, but sorry to burst all those, what we call the shovel salesman's bubble, but it all, all the marketing comes down to simple concept which I've distilled into the wow strategy. The first W is the who. The, and I, I have a saying, the who is more important than the what. Whatever you're selling is not nearly as important as knowing who you're selling it to. Yeah. So to use my example, you know, back at the fantasy sports thing, I really knew fantasy sports players. I knew rabid sports fans. I was one of them. I played in the league. I knew what I liked. I knew what I didn't like. I knew right away what I liked and didn't like from the offers, the ads. Yeah. I didn't want to send for a brochure. I didn't like the rules they had in that game. I didn't like the way the whole thing was set up. I liked the way mine was, and I knew why. And I knew how to talk to people and how to ask the right questions. And I knew their psychology. I knew what they, everything they were about. I knew the who so I could really speak to them and right. offer a solution to a problem that really was keeping them up at night. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but to a rabid sports fan, it keeps them up at night to not be able to play this fantasy sports game, especially back in those days. See, if you were a fan of a crummy team, like I am from New York, and I'm about the most loyal person you'll ever meet, so I'm a fan of my beloved but incredibly horrible New York Mets, yeah. who actually are in first place right now as we take this, which is amazing. I was at Wrigley Field last night, and I'm like... Oh, were you really? Okay. Yeah, the, 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 I know it was like wind chill in the 40s, but the Mets only come in once a year. Right. And make the annual trek to the, the, the decrepit confines of the crumbling Wrigley Field. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, honey, look at that. See, the flag for the Mets is on the top. That means first place. You never see that. I've never seen that. That's never happens. The Mets are actually first place. You know, what day is it? Well, last long, but it, it's great. The Mets are there. But anyway, so, you know, the, 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 the Mets, I love the Mets. Uh, there's a way to speak to me right. as a Mets fan that's different than different baseball fans. If you're selling Mets t-shirts, you don't want to run an ad that says, I sell t-shirts. You're not speaking to me. Right. You got to know the who. So put up 32 or how many teams. See, I don't even, thankfully, I don't even know how many teams there are now. I'm burnt out of the thing. But put up 32 different websites. You're talking to Mets fans. You're talking right. to, to, to Cubs fans. Every team's fans talk to them directly. So the who is really important. Yeah. Then the, the O of the wow factor is the irresistible offer. So many people are selling and getting no's. That means by definition, your offer is resistible. They're resisting. They're saying no. Yeah. Give an offer that. Be like the Godfather. Give them an offer that they can't refuse. Yeah. And I, I can't do a good impression of it. put cotton in my mouth or what I do the impression. Like, I ought to make an offer I can't refuse. How about that? How about if you made an offer they can't refuse, do you think your selling would get a little easier? Yeah. If offered a free brochure with a toll-free number to call, you think anybody might? That was a pretty irresistible offer to a sports fan. Well, hey, what do you got to lose? So that that's the middle part. Make yeah. it irresistible. Really, the, the Titanic theory comes into play there. That first initial sale. So many business owners are looking to make money off the tip of the iceberg that they miss all the money on the 90% below because they put yeah. out an offer that's resistible, the first offer to a consumer. Yeah. Consumer says, ah, yeah, no. And instead of just breaking even or even losing a little money on that first sale, 
and then yeah. getting them to repeat and refer and come back and buy more stuff and the 90% they miss out. So it's got to be an irresistible first offer. And the last W is the way. It's the way that you get that irresistible offer in front of your chosen who. Mm -hmm. And that can be any way at all. I've already mentioned here that I did it with a tiny little classified ads. You can, and I meant you can do it with YouTube, you can do it with Pinterest. See, those are all just a way. You don't need a separate course in all that stuff. That's not a, that's not a, there's no, like these people say, I'm an internet marketer. An internet is just a way of getting your irresistible offer to people. Right. In fact, I, I won't name the names here, but people watching, if you, if you follow any of these supposed internet marketers and you thought about it, like I know them, and I've been to their events. You you know that they don't make their money by on the internet. Their their internet marketing to you to come to their live event where they're going to sell you their big ticket stuff and their whatevers. And there is no there's there's this theory of this 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 dream of this. I'm making all the money in my underwear and and you know sending out emails all day and just sitting on a beach and making money. That you know don't buy that. It, the internet is just one way you get your message out, and I can make every way work that there is. It's just some yeah. are more appropriate for others. So for a sports fan, the most appropriate way to get that message to them back in the day was the sporting news. It was obscure sports magazines where rabid sports fans are. So I used the WOW strategy 30 years ago before I knew anything about the response, and that's it. There's no fourth letter, fifth letter, sixth letter. Everything comes down to that. So yeah. right now, if you're looking, if you have an existing business or you're thinking of one, and it's not where you want it to be, hopefully it's mammothly successful, or it's still not where you want it to be. That's all you got to do. Look at those three things and say, "Am I really speaking yeah. to my who?" Yeah. And am I offering an irresistible offer that's so irresistible they just have to come in and say yes and later on I can make money off of them or yeah. off of them. And, and am I getting it to them in the way that they want it, not the way I want it, bring it to them. See, that's another mistake. Business owners, they'll come to me and they'll say, can you make me up an ad? I, I worked for three years as a, a, a rep for a Yellow Pages publisher. Well, people come to me and go, you're the Yellow Page guy, can you make me up a Yellow Page? And I'm like, of course I can, but slow down. What's, who's, who's your who? Right. Do they look in the yellow pages? Like, we don't start with the way. The way is the last letter of the wow strategy for a reason. In fact, I, now that I think of it, I could have made it the first W. It could have been first you start with the way. Right. You get on Pinterest. You know, get a course in YouTube because YouTube is a way to make money. That, that would be the W would be the, the first W would be the way. But it's not. The last thing you think of is once I have an irresistible offer and I've got a target market to get it to. Yeah. All I got to think of is if I got an irresistible offer to chiropractors, I got to think of how does Jeremy Weiss want this offer coming to him? Does mm -hmm. he read the paper? Then I'll put an ad in the paper. Does he want text messages? I'll send a text message. Does he go to the yellow pages? Does he go on YouTube? That's finally when we'll think of the way or ways. Right. And also, I teach not to get caught up in every single way there is. Again, we're entrepreneurs. We're ADD. We see a shiny object. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm not using Pinterest. That's a good idea. Let me pay two thousand dollars for the Pinterest course, and that'll make me focus on two or three <laughs> ways at most. Yeah, two or three ways of getting your irresistible offer in front of a chosen who. That's yeah. the wow strategy. It's as simple as that. Everything else is fluff and is distraction, and it's going to cause you to to not take action and to procrastinate and to be confused. And so I simplify for people. And I my clients, I work with them really tightly on getting those three things down. Right. That puts a system in place. It relieves the stress. It makes things systematic, practically automatic. It's not automatic because you're always tweaking and things are so rapidly changing now. It's amazing, as everyone knows. There's a new, you know, website every two seconds you got to go to and put your pictures up or do whatever. Or there's a new now. There's right. an iWatch, watch, or there's a new. There's a technology all the time. So it's not. It's never going to be automatic. Right. But it's systematic. You can put your head on the pillow at night and know you've got X number of leads coming in and X number buy and X number do this and and you've got better leads coming into sales. So when I had the phone ringing back 30 years ago, it was a rabid sports fan who had read my ad and said, this sounds really great. Tell me more. In other words, it was my sale to lose. Right. I call up and go like, yeah, so I heard about you got something. Tell me about it. Like, and that's too many business owners. Now get those calls. Yeah. I hope you don't as a, as a chiropractor, but you get the calls and they go, all right, so how much? You know, like, well, if they're asking how much, your marketing is not answering their questions and solving problems where they don't know what to ask so that's what they ask hopefully right. you as a chiropractor have more better marketing like chiropractors so i don't know if you do this but successful chiropractors ones i've helped uh, with the wow strategy 
we speak to a given who. So I've got a chiropractor for golfers. Right. Now, could he fix anyone's whatever for anything? Of course, he can twist the... I'm sorry, now I'm making a mock. He can, he can adjust. He can adjust. I got you what you're saying, yeah. Any part of the body, whatever. However, is he speaking passionately to... Uh, so this happened. A chiropractor came to me years ago, and I said, who, you know, who's your who? Who's your target market? Oh, well, 40% of Americans have back pain, so I can help 40% of the people. I'm like, and you can afford... To market to forty percent of the what are you Coca Cola? What are right. you like uh, like Budweiser? Like forty percent? You just McDonald's? I mean, just everybody is your market? You know, there's a saying: if 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 your target is everyone, then your customer will be no one. Right. You're speaking to no one. Even I just mentioned a couple. Even McDonald's. I see different ads for McDonald's than kids do. Kids on Saturday morning see. Play place, Ronald McDonald. I don't know. What Happy that. meal, some toys or whatever. Whatever it is, yeah, come yeah. in and bounce in the balls. And then what? Do the, so do the, the mom and dad go, here's five bucks, kid, go bump in the ball? No, guess what? The parents go in and buy hamburgers. So the way to get to the parents is market to the kids. But the parents see, oh, drive through is late, is open late until two in the morning. Or McDLT has less calories or something. The kids don't see that. The parents see this. So it, they're speaking directly to a who. They're not just saying we're burgers. Right. Budweiser, Bur Coca-Cola. I think there's like 900 different brands under the Coca-Cola name. For, and I'm not even, let's not even include all the different brands. Let's just think of Coca-Cola. Right. If I walk into a store right now, I'm going to see Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Cherry Coke, Vanilla Coke, Vanilla Diet Coke, Cherry Caffeine Free Coke. I mean, I'm going to see 37 different Cokes, and each one is speaking to a different person. Now, they're a big billion-dollar, multi-billion-dollar company, so each one actually also has a different marketing staff. Yeah. So you've got to take different hats off when you're talking to different who's and picture that I am now the marketing department, so Budweiser. Budweiser has Bud, and then they have Bud Light. Those are two completely different markets, and you can tell just by looking at their ads. I got the kids playing beach volleyball. Is Bud Light. Get your energy and less calories. And then I got the guys in suspenders sitting in the bar. You know, Bud, it's the end of Friday. You came out of the factory. It's Bud time. You know, or Harry Carey. I'm a Bud man, you know. And then you've got, they, they bought Stella Artois. They have the fancy tuxedo guy drinking beer. and all. That's Bud. You know, there's but there's there's eighty different. They own everything. Oh yeah. All have different marketing departments. It's not the same person who goes. I want you to make up an ad for Bud, and tomorrow make up one for Bud Lime, and the next day for Stella Artois. No, it's fifteen different marketing departments. So as a business owner, like you're a chiropractor, you want to say, look, I'm going to be the chiropractor to golfers. So right. let's put together an irresistible offer. I will, you know, have you hitting straighter and less fatigue and, and not tiring out on the 14, 15, 16 holes so you can blast by your buddies and win every, butt, every bet next Sunday or your money back yeah. in three sessions, guaranteed. And that goes out to golfers. And then now you, that's an irresistible offer. You have a chosen who that you've, you've, you've studied them. You know that's what they want. They want to win the bet with their friends and play better golf and not be tired and not be sore. I don't know that, but then maybe that's what you found out from golfers. Right. You put together you your really system. target I'll, the I'll message. I'll fix it for free. Yeah. I'll fix it guaranteed or, or money back. And then you figure out the way to get it to them. Well, I guess there are golf magazines out there. There you go. Let's put it into a golf magazine that they're reading. And let's not put it into Women's Daily. And let's not put it into Time Magazine. Again, we're not Coca-Cola. We're not just putting it everywhere. Right. Let's put it into Little Obscure. Let's, let's get little banner ads on websites about golf or videos on YouTube that are golf instruction. Let's pay to advertise to them. Or, you know, let that's what now going to think of the way to get it to them. Okay, right. now you've got that message. Now how about tennis players? Well, you're going to help their tennis elbow. How about dancers? You're going to help their back when they twist and run. So you're going to get it out to ballet dancers or whatever. And you can have all these different messages. But you got to do that for maximum efficiency, Jeremy. You can't just sit there and go, I'm a chiropractor. I fix everything. Right. That's, that's going to lead to a lot of frustration in an empty office. I, you know, years ago, I broke my collarbone playing softball. And I got a referral to a uh, – no, I, yeah, I got a referral. The hospital was 10 miles away from my home. And in the emergency room, and the referral was a doctor another 10 miles in the other direction. Well, I'd broken my collarbone. Just to sit in the car and drive there was, was excruciating pain. I'm like, I, there's got to be a doctor closer than 20 miles. Forget the referral. Open up the yellow pages. I'm dating myself. And I open the yellow pages, and there was an ad under, you know, doctor, whatever, for bone, whatever it was called. And it was sports, sports doctor. 
So he said, you know, we help athletes. Whatever. And I was like, that's it. Because to me. That resonated with athlete, you. But yeah. I, mean, to me, I had broken my collarbone and I want to be back playing as soon as possible. So I need a doctor who's going to understand me. I don't want to go to one that goes, that's it, 10 weeks and sit on your back and do nothing. I want one that goes, you can get back in four weeks if you do this. And after the game, you do this and be careful when you do this and don't throw like that. And I was like. I want to go to the sports game. Well, so I made the appointment. I went in the office, and what do you, what happened when I went in the office? The walls are covered with Leroy Neiman golfers and tennis players and football players, and 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 the whole thing is a sports feel to it. And you go in, and the questions are like, "All right, so what were you playing when you hurt your shoulder? How was it?" And I'm seeing the guy with the football, the kid with the football jersey on the whatever, and I'm like, "Yeah, this is where I want to be. I'm an athlete. See, I." I, I hurt my collarbone playing sports. I'm in a sports place. Now, could that guy have fixed bones of anybody for any reason? But he'd have an empty office. Right. This office was totally packed, and we loved being there because we're in a place we call home. It was sports-minded. So that's the wow strategies. Really speak to that who mm -hmm. and give them an irresistible offer and then figure out the way to get it to them, the way they want it delivered. And that's... I'm sorry to say it, but that's magic. Now, it's not magic because it works and it's simple. But anyone that's struggling with, how do I get customers? How do I get more calls? How do I get the phone to ring? It's counterintuitive, but how about ignoring like 95% of your potential prospects? Right. It's hard to do now, for some people. It's yeah. a difficult thing for business owners. Yeah. What do you mean ignore 95% of my prospects? Well, what about, what? so they'll say this. So I have a client who owns a sewing shop, Yeah. right? So what, picture a sewing shop, a little sewing and knitting shop. What do you picture? Okay, well, she has a 15,000 square foot, molt, molt over a million dollar business now. Her business increased in the first two years work with me over half a million dollars. Wow. Because we implemented the wow strategy. Yeah. And she is selling, by the way, she sells sewing machines that are $25,000 sewing machines. I had no idea. She is and selling them like crazy. I mean, she's just doing a great job. Okay. So... All of her marketing. Who do you think all of her marketing? Who is her who? Who is her marketing directed to? For of the manufacturers, people. probably, I'm so, assuming. Well, I'm saying her marketing to for her, she got a retail. So she got a 15,000 square foot retail location. It's to the blue hairs. It's the little old ladies who want to do their sewing and their needling and their crochet and whatever they do. So she's marketing <laughs> to them, hair. right? Right. So she can look and go like, um, but, but this is now she's my client, so she doesn't say this, but somebody else might say, well, but there are some men that like to sew. All your marketing is talking to women. And mm. it's talking, you know, in her newsletter, she talks about the golden girls this or the whatever that, because that's the age and that's mm -hmm. what they want to talk about. And, and she has birthdays of the month. Hey, did you know Jane Fonda's 72? And this is, she's, uh, you know, look at uh, what, uh, you know, I saw a picture the other day. It was uh, Raquel Welch's birthday. She looked like she's still like 40. I'd be like, oh, that's what she would put in her newsletter, right? Right. So somebody might ask, well, what about guys? There were some guys that liked to sew. Well, this is my answer. If a guy walks into her shop and says, I want to sew, what would she say to him? I'll sell you a machine. Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah. Here's a machine. Here's yarn. Here's whatever you got. Here's yeah. what. But we're not wasting any time or money marketing to them. Right. So this sports chiropractor I went to see, if anyone that knew me said like, wow, your collarbone healed pretty quick. Uh, did you have a doctor you liked? Yeah, because I, you know, hurt my leg, but it wasn't playing sports. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he would still see you. Right. But his his lobby is still covered in only sports. His ads are all about sports. Everything is sports. He probably has a thing where he sponsors the, the high school football team with an ad and a sports thing or whatever. You don't ever have to say no to a sale. But concentrate your marketing and your right. sales message on a target who for much better results. So you won't say no, you won't lose customers from it, but you've got to lose customers from your marketing efforts or else you are just wasting a lot of money. You're putting a milk toast message that's just not going to get responded to. You're going to get frustrated. So Steve, what's another, you help a lot of business owners. What's another transformation story, one of your favorites, where you saw someone in this position and then whatever you directed and however they uh, use the wow factor and strategy and the strategies you implemented what you know what results they got on the other side uh, you know there's so many of them so let's see I've picked uh, I did one for sports fans I did a sports doctor I talked about a sewing shop for old ladies 
something for What's God. What's one of your favorites throughout the years? Uh, uh, I got one I'm working with now. He is a uh, owns an auto repair shop, second generation. He worked in the shop when he was a kid for his dad and sweeping the floors, painting the fence, doing whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, like, wax on, wax off. But anyway, so uh, and it was his dream to take over the shop, thriving shop, pillar of the community. His dad takes over the shop and whoosh, thing business just you know is, is he's going under. And he is, uh, it, it's self-described, he's like kicking the dog when he comes home, not actually kicking the dog. Right. Like miserable. My wife called me a jerk. I'm yelling at the kids. I'm working seven days a week. Uh, you know, this is, I'm, I'm running my dad's business in the ground. This has got to be excruciating for him and frustrating. He doesn't know what's going on, what to do. And he uh, discovers direct response marketing. He figures out a way to get an irresistible offer to his target market. Now, he had a list like I did, and the suggestion was take your list. Anyone that's come into the shop, order, if you had your car repaired, they have your name address when you drop the car, so, and phone number. And he actually just called and left a, uh, a voicemail to all the phone numbers on the list with an irresistible offer. Come in and get an oil change for five bucks or whatever it was, some irresistible just to bring them back in the shop and then say, by the way, now that you came in, here's a package of services for this, that, this, that, and whatever, and this, or who else, you know, whatever, and 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 that's the first thing that he learned when he did that. Hey, this worked. Right. This irresistible offer directly to my list, answering a frustration they have, because he spoke about how look when you take your oil to be changed at a I won't mention the name, but some typical oil shop, it's a different fifteen year old, eighteen year old pimply face kid every time. They don't know your car. They might mess it up. Who knows what's going on down there? You're getting your twenty bucks worth, but you bring it to me. We know our people. We know our cars. We know our shop. I'll let you know if something else is wrong, and I won't have to send you somewhere else to fix it because I'm only an oil change guy. I will actually a lot of times even, and he had the testimonies and the stories of like, yeah, we fixed that for free. Don't worry, we did this, we did that. Like you want it to someone who's a family who you care about. This was mm -hmm. the message he sent. So he he had a a target who. And he had an irresistible offer speaking right to him. He brought, he, he called him on the phone. That's how they wanted to hear this. And the cars came in the shop. So he was like, this stuff works. Let's do some more. Right. Uh, long story short, after about three years, the shop uh, became a, he moved out of that initial location because he expanded and became a million dollar shop. He went into a place with three bays instead of the two big place. A couple of years later, about a year later, he knocked down a wall in this location and, and, and doubled his size and had six bays. He's about to knock another hole in the wall through the cinder block next door, and he'll have nine bays. He just keeps growing and growing. He has now, for five straight years, won the Reader's Choice Award in his county newspaper for the number one auto repair and the number one oil change in the county for five straight years. Everyone mm -hmm. loves him. He's a pillar of the community. But this, he was way back in the darkest place. He even, his story, he tells you about how he thought that his family be better off with the insurance money without him. Wow. That's how bad it was. That's horrible. Now, he not only doesn't miss a game of his kids, he coaches Little League. He goes to every swim meet of his kid. He doesn't even come into the shop on weekends. He wouldn't even think about that. Doesn't have to. He doesn't lift a wrench. He doesn't do anything in the business. He works on the marketing. We're always putting some into place. And what we recently did is we decided he was getting all this uh, these requests for help. From auto, auto auto repair shops, he knew. Hey, can you help me? Look at what the heck happened. I mean, your shop, everyone knew it was going under. We just couldn't wait until you go under, and then everyone's got to come to us. Like, but suddenly you're blowing us all away now. What happened? And so he would help them, but he doesn't want to travel. He was traveling to help them. He doesn't want to have to charge the humongous sums. So I said, let's do this. Let's put up a website. Everyone will get a password into it. Every single thing you do in your business, we'll put in there. And any member, we call it the Look Over My Shoulder program. Mm -hmm. And they're looking over John's shoulder. So I tell the story about when I was a kid in school. I don't know about you, but I always wanted to sit behind the smart girl in the class. So I didn't have to study at all. I just, you know, look over her shoulder and copy all the answers. Now, once in a while, I actually knew something in the class. <laughs> and, and the guy would tap me, and I'm like, whatever. I pushed the paper over. I do, I'll never forget. I got caught. And I got punished like as bad as him. I'm like, I got every answer right. I didn't cheat. I've a, yeah, you did. You showed him yours. But I, so this look over my shoulder, bad thing, bad thing in society. Look over my shoulder, bad, not allowed. But in the real world, 
That's how well, it works. Yeah. Up the shoulder. Why right. would you sit there with a struggling auto repair shop now? Well, John has got customers more than he can handle. He's got to knock down walls to handle them. Yeah. Why would you say, I got to start from scratch and dream up stuff to do? Why don't you just take everything John does and copy it? So I'm like, John, mm -hmm. unless the guy across the street from you becomes your member, you are a, a, a local business. You have nothing to lose by sharing this with every auto repair shop you can, letting them look over your shoulders. So now people pay a membership fee. Yeah. And they get to copy every email, every letter, every postcard, every phone call, every sign he has, every form he uses to collect testimonials, to collect customer information, to get referrals. You know, he teaches them how to get joint ventures and get. He he also with every oil change, you get two free tickets to the local movie theater or a free car wash at the deluxe car wash place. How to set up these? He teaches everything. How to keep better technicians. I, we hear that a lot now. People. Can't find good text, can't keep on. Okay, so we teach us how to do that. Everything he does in his shop, he lets other people do. Yeah. And we call it the look over my shoulder. So yeah. now he's been tremendously successful in his own using the wow strategy. He's now able to, like you said in the beginning about me, because that's what I told you, is that vicarious thrill that he is now right. helping build auto repair shops all over the country where he doesn't have to travel to them, charge them large fees, be away from his family, he's home for dinner every night, and he knows he's really making an impact now. Yeah. He's helping his brethren, because why keep it all to himself? Right. So I love doing that, and I'm actually doing that now with two other people. We're, we're doing the same thing, so step one is I help them revolutionize their business and either go from struggling to wildly successful or yeah. successful to even more wildly successful, and then let's share that and make you what a lot of people call the guru of the industry. Right. Share that with your industry. There are successful stories of people you've heard of, I've heard of, and we know that have done that. Yeah. The Joe Polish of the world, the carpet cleaners, and, and, and others, I won't mention, that have been very successful in their industry and then teach others. See, yeah. I love, I mentioned, my mom's a school teacher. I love to teach. Yeah. Why hold it to yourself? Why not teach somebody else? So I love, and, yeah. and I, I actually learned now that not everyone likes to teach or is, or is, is got the, it's not in them to teach. And I have to coach my clients in this look over my shoulder. That, hey, look, here's what you got to think when you're teaching. You got to be, you got to explain everything. Oh yeah, I got to do that. To me, it's, it's. I grew up with a teacher. It's natural, it's yeah. natural to to teach. I love to teach. I love the. That's that vicarious thrill. I mean, look, I'm building a, a sewing shop, an auto repair shop, attorneys, doctors, this, that. I'm, how great is that? Yeah. How great is that? If I can help even more people, I might be able to have put a dent into this incredibly horrible economy we've been suffering through for years because small business owners are struggling and they shouldn't be. Right. They got to just do some of the right things or, or, or do all the right things. Let's, let's get going here. Let's not listen to the nonsense of, well, the economy's bad or you understand. or I understand. But yeah. I'm not talking about affecting the economy. Talking about we can all as small business owners affect our own economy by starting to do these right things and it's just three letters I mean three it's a lot of work is involved there but it's right. real simple let's focus on these three things let's get them right and yeah. then let's move on to the next project but it's it's exciting yeah Steve I wish we had three more hours um, but uh, I want to know how you got started in direct response marketing you know obviously you were doing it intuitively early on. When did your formal, okay, now I'm learning a uh, structure. Uh, I know you're a huge GKIC. I was, yeah, I was a Dan Kennedy student. That's how. What happened is I, um, uh, you know, ever since I first started, you know, made that company a wild success from nothing, uh, I had people asking me for help and friends and, you know, can you help me with this? So I was, and again, I love teaching. So I was always consulting and teaching unofficially. Uh, later on, I started a, consulting practice and but I wasn't doing the right things I wasn't getting the right clients I was yeah, I was helping startups basically yeah. and a lot of startups fail tough. no matter how much I help them or guide them they just wouldn't take the action so frustrated yeah. wouldn't take the they had nothing to lose so they didn't take the action and I had done all this work and put all this together and I they weren't all like me with my fantasy sports game where I took all that action right. they were like I got an idea Steve and I got referred to them, you know, I remember being, you know, people in my church or this, I got referred and I would help these people and they wouldn't do anything. Or they would push back on everything right. and go, yeah, oh, what do you mean you're giving a super, a, a, a World Series trip when everyone's given a hat? What are you doing? What do you, you know, they would just push back on everything and uh, I wasn't getting good clients. And then what happened is I got married, my beautiful wife, Michelle, 
and she her, got downsized out of her company, was downsized, whatever. She lost her six-figure job, which was enabling me to be a dysfunctional, great consultant with no clients. I mean, barely any client, no, no, no really good paying clients. So, yes. you know, and it's similar to business owners. You could be the world's greatest chiropractor. You can make the greatest adjustment in the world. If you're not going to get your marketing going, you got no one to adjust. You got an empty office. What a waste. So that was me as a consultant. I could help a lot of people, but I wasn't getting the thing going. And it was enabled by my wife paying the bills and bringing them up. Well, she lost that job. And I was like, you know, somebody here needs to be the man of the house and get a real job. And I figured that should be me. So I went and got a, a real job. And that's when I uh, walked into a, uh, and it wasn't really still a real job, of course, because again, my roots are paper root, vendor medicines, we're all commission. Let's right. go. If you don't walk around the seats and sell popcorn, you go home with no money. Then. Right. By the way, a lot of kids did when the concerts are out or whatever. They just come in to watch the concert for free. I'm like, I hear it, and I might as well go home with 30 bucks. <laughs> That's how we can go up in the front row and go backstage. It was kind of fun. But anyway, so I get to work. And I uh, answer an ad that is a struggling law firm in downtown Chicago. They are, the phone is ringing off the hook with leads, says the ad. Too many leads was the headline. Hmm. A salesperson's dream. Right. Too many leads, we don't know how to close them. We need somebody here who knows how to sell. I'm like, great opportunity. I'm going to go in and I told I said, I'm going to go in. I'm going to show you how to sell these leads. The lawyers are trying to sell the leads. My goodness, let's not even start with the end. The sales <laughs> market attorney's trying to make sales. It was just horrible. I was like, on my interview, I was like, like, well, you know, attorneys, I don't know if you know, but they're like, well, no, you can't answer the phone because you're not vet. We don't know what you'll say when I just hand me the phone. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. You know, they were charging like 300 bucks for something, whatever, because they were like, oh, all we have to do is file this form. That'll take me 15 minutes. I'm like, no, 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 no. The guy just told you it's like a $15,000 problem you're going to solve. Give me the phone. I was like, for 1500 bucks, we'll take care of that for you. Don't worry what we'll do. We'll just take care of it. It'll be all done. 1500 bucks. Boom, credit card. Within 30 minutes, I'm like, there you go. You want me to do this? I'll put a system together only if I put a system together and then I get to hire more salespeople and teach them and build a sales force. And that's what I did. And within nine months, I took that company from, they were on the brink of going out, they were just like, that's it, we're just going out of business. They were doing it as a night thing, trying to get this thing going. It was a, a, a emergency IRS, you know, they got a lean on your house thing like you see the ads on TV. So they were coming out of their job and at night trying to solve these problems and they're part time and they were about to give it up. Doesn't work, we can't. We get the leads, but we can't close these. You know, leads were easy. You get a list of everyone with a tax lien. It's a public mm. record. So they, and they got the calls. They couldn't get them to give them any money and to fix their problem. Yeah. I, I could. And and nine months later, we had 18 employees, was a over a million-dollar business now, and things are rocking and rolling. So once again, oh. but what happened was I was like, I looked into the office. There were three attorneys. One was a silent partner who just put in money, was working, had liked his cushy job at a firm. Another guy was doing all the legal work and trying to sell. And the third one was doing the marketing. He was getting the leads, getting the phone room. Well, the marketing guy had on his desk a bobblehead doll of a grown man in a suit on a bull. <laughs> right. And I was like, what is that? I have, I've seen baseball players. I've never seen a, a bobblehead of a grown man in a suit with big mutton chops riding a bull. What the heck is that? He goes, right. that's Dan Kennedy. I go, what does that mean? He goes, how do you think we get the phone ring? How do you think we get too many leads? Yeah. I study this Dan Kennedy market. I go out to a super, I go to Arizona every year where he lives, so I'm dating myself, this is way back, and I go out there to a conference and I put this together and that's how we get the leads, Dan Kennedy. So that's when it hit me, who's this Dan Kennedy guy? What's this conference all about? How can you learn how to do this stuff? How could I get the leads so I can go back to my own consulting thing and get my own leads and close them? And so that was my introduction was, again, I knew right I didn't have to be skeptical and go, I wonder if that works. Right. It was like, how do you think the phone is ringing off the hook? It's called right. direct response marketing. Yeah. So that was my introduction. And now, I don't have it behind me here. I don't think it's over by my computer. I have my own bobblehead now of myself. And of I'm you, okay. Right now. Because that's my nickname, known as the Rhino, and uh, and I have my own bobblehead doll, my own cartoons of a Rhino, my own magazine is called Rhino Monthly, my own blog is called Rhino Daily, and my podcast is Rhino Daily, and so and I've got a collection of like a thousand Rhinos, people that you know, what do you get? Someone has everything. They get me Rhinos from all over the world. Uh, so I have my own, but back then, I'd never seen a person on a bobblehead, and he was revered because of what he could do for mm -hmm. businesses. And you being a chiropractor. 
you know, Dan started out by specializing in dentists and chiropractors. Mm -hmm. We know. Right. Again, it goes back to that wow strategy. He could have helped anybody, but he said, I have help for chiropractors and for dentists. So really targeted. full circle, yeah. you know, zero in on that target who. Later on, you want to have two, three, four target markets, 10, you want to go to later, but zero in on a real target who that you can speak to and deliver an irresistible offer that'll make them just say, I'd be an idiot to not do business with you and give you a shot to prove how good you are, that you're on time, that you do what you say, well, I'll come back, I'll refer friends, but you got to get them in there and then find the way or the ways to get that irresistible offer to that chosen who. Real simple. And yeah. then, of course, you will be saying, wow. That's why I call it the wow strategy. Like, wow. <laughs> Didn't know it was that simple, Steve. Didn't even know this existed. I just thought I got to place a billboard or put my logo way on top of my ad and just be an auto repair guy and people will come in because, you know, cars break down. Yeah, no. Doesn't happen. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, Steve, Unfortunately, we, we only have one. is fun. We only have one more minute, and I appreciate your time because I think well, I, I, I could keep, a list of like four hundred questions. I could keep I rambled. I on. could keep and, asking you questions for the next five hours, probably, and we could still go strong. But where should we, where should we point people towards? And what's one last thing we should leave them with? Because we we talked about a lot of uh, great direct response marketing uh, advice. Well, I do this now. I, I get overloaded, so. You might want to get in quick or take it with a grain of salt, but I will, uh, when I'm invited, which is a lot of time, I do these interviews or I'm asked to speak or invite, and I will offer a free strategy session. This is not some thinly veiled sales pitch. Believe me, I'm, I don't even take on one-on-one -on -one clients anymore. I'm not looking for clients. Uh, once in a while, sure, I will get a client out of this, but I love to get on the phone, in case you can't tell, and mm -hmm. get a, 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 do a, strike, have someone say, here's my problem. What do I do? And I'm like, ba boom, ba bang, and the person's excited. And I'm like, just report back to me the results because there's that vicarious thrill that I love. So right. go to thewowstrategy.com okay. or go to my name, stevecypress.com, and you can fill out a little form. Now, I recommend that you fill that form out and make it seem really fun and interesting, whatever problem you're having. So I'm excited to call you because anytime I mention this on any of these interviews, I get overloaded and it's just me. And I I'm not giving 12, there's the phones ringing yeah. right now. I don't give 12 hours a day to be doing these, but I'll, right. I'll do a few of them. Yeah. But that's what I'll do for your, right. for your readers, your listeners. I will give a free wow strategy session to help them to nail down those three simple areas and stop kicking the dog and start having a lot of fun with your business. Because you've got a business, you're providing value, you're, you might be paying payroll, you might, you're paying taxes, you're paying suppliers, you're, you're providing goods and services to the community, you're doing all these things, and yet... 90% of businesses go out of business. And yeah. before they do, they struggle and you make no money. And right. you work too many hours and you have too much stress. That's terrible. I hate that. I hate that. You, now you get me all riled up and you didn't even do it. I'm getting, I hate that small business owners should be the highest paid, least stressed people in the world. That's the opposite. Right. So I'm on a mission to fix that. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Well, go on your next call. I appreciate it, Steve. It's been fantastic. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.